What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at Photoshop. There's a big new update, it's actually a couple of weeks old at this point, but there's some pretty exciting stuff in there, including something which is kind of mind-blowing. So, you know, when it works. So we're going, to, we're going to dive in, we're going to have a look at that. It's a landscape mixer, it's a new neural filter, and it's a way to effectively change your photos, your landscape photos. You can change the season, the time of day. You can really, really change things up. Now, I'm gonna show you how we do it. I'll have a little play with it. We're gonna have a little play with it here on the video. I'm gonna show you how you can make some little tweaks as well to really make the most out of it. Is this a tool you would use all the time? Definitely not. Is it a tool you would use really for actual work that mattered in any way? Maybe not. There is one photo that I'm quite pleased with, to be honest, how it's come out. But otherwise, this is probably more of a bit of fun, but it is really interesting to play around with. And like I say, I played around with it a little bit and I ended up with one photo that I actually really, really liked, which realistically, I'll never be able to actually take the particular photograph I ended up with. I'll show you that at the end of the video. I should also mention this is part of our content advent calendar. This is day two. So if you have anything you'd like to see, we're doing videos every day in the run up to Christmas. So let me know in the comments if there's something specific you'd like to see, a tutorial, review, something like that, and I'll do my best to get to it. Let's dive into Photoshop. I've got this photo here. This is just a photo I took with the Nikon Z9. Uh, nice bit of squirrel on the tree, looking straight at the camera, lovely. Let's make this into a wintry photo. Obviously this was kind of autumn, uh, looks, you know, there's a bit of green, it's quite sort of pleasant, but we can turn this into a winter photo really quite easily. Now we've just got the background layer here. I've done nothing here. I'm just gonna unlock that by clicking on the little lock symbol there. I'm gonna come to filter, neural filters, and that's gonna open this panel here. Now we've looked at this before, things like the skin smoothing, uh, things where you can make people smile kind of in post, very strange, but you know, that's not what we're gonna do today. Today we're gonna to come to Landscape Mixer here. And let's click to turn that on. Now, here we've got the kind of panel for how we want to control this. We can change the look of this. We've got different sliders like sunset, spring, summer, autumn, winter. We've also got these presets up here as well. So these are photos that we can essentially try and uh, take elements from and add to our current photo. So we could try and make it look a little bit like this wintry mountain photo by taking elements from that photo. So things like color grading, uh, actual literal elements from it, like the rocky kind of surface, the, the snow, stuff like that. We could take this sunset mountain photo here. But what we're gonna do in this photo, we're gonna come down here and we're gonna use the winter slider to just try and winter this up a little bit. Now, before we do that, I wanna click this little tick box here, preserve subject. And what that's gonna do is uh, Photoshop, not Lightroom, Photoshop is gonna find the subject in the photo using its subject detection software, which is actually really good. Uh, so it should be able to find the squirrel. It might find the tree as well. We'll, we'll see what happens. And it'll stop that from being changed too much in terms of actually applying new elements to it. It might color grade it a little bit, especially if I click harmonize subject here, that's a new feature as well. We've actually got a harmonization kind of tab over here. That's if you want to composite one element on top of another. So in this case, it'll detect the subject, so the squirrel, and then when it changes the rest of the photo, it'll harmonize the squirrel to fit nicely in the photo. And that generally means that it will do a little bit of color grading, maybe some lighting adjustment to make it fit really nicely in the new setting. Those I found are incredibly important to leave on if you have an element in the photo, which is your subject, which obviously almost all photos will have some kind of subject. But of course we can go in and we can tweak stuff after as well. So let's just get this ball rolling. Let's go ahead and bring this winter slider. Let's bring it all the way out to 100 and see what Photoshop does. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice is that it says down here at the bottom, processing on device. So we're not processing in the cloud anymore, we're processing on device, which should generally speed things up, which is really nice. I, th I like that as part of this up update. And there we go. So immediately, it's made quite a serious adjustment to the photo. It's added kind of this new wintry background and it's added kind of a wintry look to the tree, but it's left the squirrel mostly alone because it has identified that as a subject. So that's good, it's, it's identified that the tree is not the subject. Now, what Photoshop is actually doing is taking actual parts of a different photo and actually putting it on here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna press okay so we can have a look at this properly. What it's actually doing, if I turn this layer off, you know, we've, we've exported this to a new layer, so we've got our old layer underneath, you can see it is actually quite literally 
putting new elements onto this photo. So it's not just color grading, it's completely new. The tree, you can see there, it's a completely different texture. It's changing kind of everything about it. So it's adding new things to the photo. Now, I don't think that's terrible by itself. I think maybe we could do a better job and there's certainly tweaks and stuff like that we could try. Let's actually delete that photo and actually come up here to, or layer rather, come up here to neural filters again, and then we'll just add on the landscape mixer again. Let's try one of these presets instead. Let's try this snowy mountain here. Let's play around a little bit with the sliders. So we've selected the preset, the strength is at 100. It's processing now and it's gonna show us the end result. That looks crazy, partly because I've not, <laughs> I've not preserved the subject. So you can see how that massively affects the squirrel. That looks ridiculous. So let's click preserve subject and harmonize subject. That should bring us back our nice squirrel. And then we're going to play around with these sliders as well. So let's just let that process so that we can see the squirrel again. Right, there we go. That's a little bit better now, right? So let's bring the strength down. We had it at a hundred. Let's bring it down to something like 50. Let's see what that looks like just by itself. Okay, so that's an interesting look to things. Uh, it's not as sort of wintry. Let's bring the winter slider up as well. Let's bring that to about 50 so that we've got the, the preset and the winter slider both sort of working together. Okay, I like that. Let's bring the winter slider down a little bit. And what, what I found with this is a lot of it is just a bit of trial and error, to be honest. A lot of it is just sort of experimenting with how things look until you get to a point where you're kind of happy with it. Okay, let's click OK here. Now, there's a couple of things I would probably want to uh, tidy up a little bit here. There's a bit of the tree which Photoshop just hasn't affected there. So we can easily just go in, get a clone stamp, Alt, select this bit of the tree here. So we've got the edge and just brush that in really quite easily, like so. That's not particularly taxing. Let's just make sure we've got uh, this bit here as well. We can also do the same with this bit of tree. We can just go ahead and do a bit of this. Lovely, that sorts the tree out. And then we might wanna affect things with kind of like a, a curves adjustment, for example. I might just bring down parts of the image uh, using a layer mask there. I'm just gonna press Control I to make everything black. That means no part of the image is affected. Then with a paintbrush with white selected, I can just paint in on some of this background, I can paint in where we've reduced those curves down. And that means that we're gonna have a slightly darker bit of the image with the squirrel now being a little bit kind of brighter in the image, which is good. We could go ahead and get the hue saturation, maybe bring the saturation down a touch, which I think would be probably quite handy. Again, I'm just gonna use the layer mask here. Everything is white, which is great. I want most of the photos selected. I'm gonna use a black paintbrush and just paint in over the squirrel here to actually uh, make that not affected by the saturation. We could also go in and add a color lookup as well. This is a way of kind of color grading the whole image and that's a great way of pulling everything together. So we just go in at adjustment layer, color lookup, and then we can go ahead and load 3D LUD. Now these are all kind of essentially like photo filters we can apply. So let's go ahead and do something like drop blues. I think that might be quite interesting. And we can bring the opacity down to make it less kind of intense. I don't think that looks too bad to be totally honest with you. We can see the original photo here and then where we ended up. Now, is it perfect? Is it ideal? Maybe not. Maybe I'd do some more tweaks to it, add in some kind of lights of exposure. But I think that's an interesting look. Let me show you another couple of examples without taking you through the entire process of doing it. So for example, we've got this photo of a car. Now this is my friend's car. We went out at 1 a.m., took a few photos, but we took this photo, this is the Sony 7200 uh, G Master lens, Mark II, very nice lens, very nice lens. And I really enjoyed taking the photo of this car. Now I had a play around. I made it a wintry photo. I played around with layer masks, added a bit of light here and there by just painting in white light and changing the blending motor screen and soft light and playing around with a few different things, added in some snow overlay. I'm pretty happy with how this particular photo has come out as kind of a wintry photo. I think it's, I think it's pretty interesting. I'll show you that photo that I mentioned at the beginning of the video where I said, actually, I'm pretty happy with how this photo has come out. We have this photo of a squirrel. Again, same thing, Nikon Z9 went out bunch of squirrel photos because the squirrels were super friendly that day. 
I really like this photo. I like the composition of it. I like the feel of it. And I will never be able to get this photo with the squirrel like this in the snow because I just don't think it's ever going to happen. But I was able to change this to a winter photo. I was able to play around a bunch with kind of dodging and burning to affect the light, a bit of snow overlay, really playing around with layer mask, really going in, fine tuning it. And I'm pretty happy with the end result of the kind of snowy version of this picture. I think actually... I would maybe, I'm going to have it as my computer background right now, and maybe I'll get it printed up. I don't know. We'll have to see. I'd be interested to print it and see what it looks like in print. You know, see how it holds up like that. But this is a really interesting, kind of powerful update. I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts on it. Is this something you'd like to play around with? Is it something you'd use in any way? Something that you have been looking forward to, perhaps? Let me know down in the comments, because I'd love to hear all of your thoughts on it. Maybe you don't like it. Maybe you hate it. I'd love to hear about that as well. So let me know. Of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. I will, of course, see you in the next video, which will, of course, be tomorrow. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.